Hey Defenders, welcome back. So in the last video we installed OS Query and we interacted with OS Query using the command line interface. Um, and which is great, which gives us a lot of insight and knowledge into our systems. However, we need a way to automate these queries so that we don't have to manually log on to every server and uh, run them manually. You know, that's a nuisance and that doesn't scale well at all. Uh, thankfully, OS Query has a daemon that we can take advantage of and we can actually pair this with Wazoo's uh, Woodle capabilities so that Wazoo is actually running the daemon for us and that way our queries run on set times and that process is automated for us and is then pumped into our Wazoo manager and into Elasticsearch for us to query and alert on, right? so. This will give us the flexibility to automate this action and as, as well as scale out uh, much, much easier, right? Rather than having to manually log on to every server and run the queries yourselves. So let's go ahead and jump into that. And all right, so I have my OS Query server here. Um, as of now, OS Query is not running. So if I do a systemctl status OS Query D, um, so if you remember in the last video, we did OS Query uh, CI, I think? E OS Query I, yeah. So an OS Query I brings up the command line interface, right? So now I'm able to interact with OS, OS Query. Uh, if I exit out of this guy uh, and then kill this process, we can now set up the Wazoo agent to run the OS Query daemon for us. So OS Query I is the command to interact with the CLI. But if I do a system CTL status OS Query D, we can see that it's stopped and not running. So I can run it as a daemon service. Um, and I could, I, you know, I could do that by just saying start, right, and then load this up. And now that output, the, the, the service is running and it's outputting to my log file. However, I can also have the Wazoo agent control this service for us, right? And so let's go ahead and enable that. So again, I'm going to take advantage of the groups, uh, the, the groups functionality. So by default, uh, my agent is actually a part of the default group. So if I go into groups, uh, you see I only have one group here. I've subtly hinted at other group or how groups uh, work and how you can take advantage of them to you know scale out your configuration changes pretty easily. Uh, and so I'm gonna do that in this case as well. So say for example, I'm trying to get OS Query running on, let's say instead of seven agents like I have in this default group, I have a data center with 100 plus servers, right? And they all belong to, we'll just for simplicity, we'll just say the default group, but in an actual scenario, you probably, you may have like Linux, uh, Windows group, um, maybe you have some front channel servers um, and you have their configurations that are a little different, so you have a different group for those. Um, but what the this will allow us to do is I can interact with the configuration file and this will push out to all of my Wazoo agents that are a part of this group. So instead of manually logging on to every server within the group and saying open up the var osec etc osec.conf, Right, so instead of manually logging on to every server and doing that, what I can do is make a config change within the group here, and that will push out automatically for us. Um, so we can see that process work. If I go ahead and tail this log file, um, and I'll just kind of keep that in the background. So let's actually go ahead and enable this. And to enable it, it's pretty easy. Um, so I'll go into the files in my group, go into my agent.conf, and you can see I already have a few um, I have some few configs here um, that aren't related to, to this demo, so we um, so you guys don't need to worry about that. And then what we're gonna do is add the Woodle tag. So I should already have that copied within my buffer. So if I paste here, 
yep, we now have this Woodle tag. Um, so let's go ahead and walk through this. So this is specifying that we're using the OS query Woodle, and uh, this the the functionality of the OS query Woodle is built into Wazoo. I didn't do anything behind the scenes to activate this, um, which is really nice. All I did was install OS query, right? So we did that in the last video, and um, and make sure a Wazoo agent is on there as well, right? And that's all the prep work that I have to do before adding this Woodle block here. So let's go ahead and run through these tags here. So we're saying disabled to no, so we're activating it, right? Uh, run as a daemon, and we're specifying that to yes. So what the Wazoo agent will do is it will actually start the OS query D, the OS query daemon for us, right? Which is nice. So it'll, it'll control that, and if if the service fails for whatever reason, it'll uh, it'll attempt to, to restart it automatically for us, which is nice. We then have the bin path, uh, which is the binary path. So this will so you need to tell the Wazoo agent where is the OS query daemon. Uh, located right where is that binary located at and to do so you can just do a which OS query D uh, you can do this for any service and it'll locate it for you so if I do a which OS query D we see that the binaries reside behind the user bin which is what they have default here um, a little tip so by default they search for OS query already so they they append that to the path location already so you may think well you're just pointing to user slash bin you're not actually pointing to the binary um and that's within the the bin path tag here and that's true because they already add the os query d onto that so um so we don't have to worry about that and um yeah by default it should install within user bin but maybe you compiled it yourself in an easy check to see where that resides is to just run a which. I um, mean, you can do this for any service, right? So I could say for Python. So if I say which Python, I see it's running here, right? And so um, uh, we then have our log path. So we need to tell Wazoo where our our file, where you know where where is the log file that we are getting results from, right? So uh, by default, again, this is under var log os query os query dot results dot log um, if you compiled os query by yourself or uh, this is a CentOS box so maybe if you're on a Debian operating system um, they may output it to a different log path um, I wouldn't think so but it's worth uh, verifying and checking so if I cd into my os query directory we see our os query results dot log and if we go ahead and tell that uh, we can see some of our jobs already running, right? So go ahead and stop that. So you want to just make sure your path to your log file is correct. And unlike the bin underscore path tag, this is not appended by default. So you need to specify that yourself. And then we have the config path. And that config path is meaning the osquery.conf file. So in the last video, we made our changes to that. Uh, so if I Etsy into osquery, let's see os query and open the os query.conf file you want to make sure that this file exists because this is the configuration settings for os query so we're pointing to some ad hoc queries that we've made right so in the last video we specified this root login one to be ran automatically for us um, and here is our sql like statement to grab the last time the root user logged in uh, within the last hour and then we have our packs down here below, right? So we also took a look at those in the last video. These packs store a lot of pre-built uh, OS query commands that will be ran for us as well. So you also want to make sure that this packs block is within your osquery.conf so that the Wazoo agent is able to run OS query, right? The OS query daemon. And then the OS query daemon is able to run all these other queries that reside within these packs. Um, so you want to make sure that is set up there as well. So OS query is stopped. Um, let's go ahead and tail the log file again of the Wazoo agent. So I'll go ahead and save this config change. 
And what we'll see is that the Wazoo manager will push it out to the agent and the agent will actually restart and that'll happen automatically, right? So as you can see, it just received a new config change and is now restarting, which is really nice. So again, if you have a ton of servers within one group, um, this scales really well. So we can make config changes to our whole environment uh, at once rather than having to log on onto every server and doing it manually, which which is a really nice feature to have. Um, and then, so we see that the OSEC, oh, sorry, sorry, that's this check, never mind. And so we see our OS query Woodle looks to have started. Um, it started well. So this is now, the Wazoo agent is now running the OS query daemon. So if we tail that results.log file again, we can see that queries are now starting to, to run, uh, which is nice. So we know that the daemon is running as expected. And what's really nice too is by default, we don't have to create any OS query rules. Those are actually already created with the Wazoo install. So, which is really nice. And they also have a module that we can look at uh, called OS Query. If you don't see the OS Query link here, uh, by default, it's not enabled. So you need to go into settings, select modules. And if you scroll down, you should see this OS Query one and just make sure that this guy is selected. And so I'll go ahead and go into this guy and they've created their own dashboard and here we can already see alerts starting to come in right which is great and this i again i didn't have to create any rules these are all these come installed with wazoo by default uh, and if i go into the events tab we'll then get all of the metadata around these right so already i can see that my root login one has already popped off and if we open this up and see the metadata we get similar results to when we were running um, the commands ad hoc, right? So again, it's breaking up into columns. So I can see these. this is the host IP address that logged in as the root user, right? So I'm, I'm getting similar, I'm getting the exact same results as when we run OS query using the CLI. Um, it's just instead of it visually being in a table like it was in the past, we now have that broken out into all of these metadata fields, right? And so these relay to us the same information. So if I want to maybe filter specifically just on root login queries, right? So again, that matches what I have within my config file. So I specified this query here, I gave it a title of root login. And so that's directly what uh, directly what correlates to the data.osquery.name field. So maybe I wanna see all the queries that have been ran for the root login uh, rule, I guess you could kind of think of it as a rule. And so if I filter on that and add that in, this will now filter out and just give us the, the one result. So now we have the ability to store our OS query results, right? And we also have the ability to monitor on these appropriately. And we also have the ability to filter on specific fields that m populate a OS query result. And so what's nice is if we go to our GitHub, and if you remember, we had some, if you remember, I provided some uh, some queries to get you guys started. So say for example, like this process running without a binary disk, right? Well, this, as we discussed in the last video, couldn't be an indicator of compromise, meaning that there is some malicious process running within memory that doesn't actually have a binary within the file system. So someone is trying to hide that they have a malicious process running within memory um, by not having it actually reside on disk. So this is a query that would find that for us. And what we could do is add that to our schedule, right? So just copy and paste what we had here. Um, and instead of the query being this guy, we would set the query to be this select statement here. That would then come into Wazoo and we could have a automated alert go out to our InfoSec team if 
that rule had a positive result, right? So if it actually populated the log with a positive result, that would then be pumped into here and we could then immediately see that there may be a process running within memory that doesn't actually have a binary on disk, right? And could be a good indicator of compromise. So we now have the ability to automate our OS query queries uh, for us and we have the wazoo agent control that for us and and most of the grunt work has already been done by the guys at wazoo so all we have to do is come into our group section uh, and make sure that the config for the OS query woodle is set into place and and once you verify that and that the OS query daemon is being started up correctly uh, you would see if you had any failures, uh, I would suggest tailing the osec.log file for any debugging that you may need to do. Uh, if, for example, like OS query, like actually, I'll show you an example. So, you know how I said, so if I gave it a bad binary path and saved and pushed this out, we'll see our agent restart. All right, so I got it. Uh, new restart and we then see our error for our OS query woodle right couldn't execute OS query check file and permission so it, it can't find the binary right and that's specifically here because I put this garbage in that um, doesn't actually exist so this is a good log file to tail when you're making this config uh, just to make sure that everything's running correctly and Really, for any Wazoo agent related debugging, um, this is a good log file to, to tail. And I think that'll sum it up for this video. I uh, appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Hopefully you guys can implement this within your own environment. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or concerns or comments, throw them in the comment section below. And I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next video.